The Toyota Innova has been the undisputed king of the MPV segment, but when we pit it up against the Logi, the Renault came out to be the better car. But we knew that its advantage was going to be short-lived because on the horizon was this, what they now call the Toyota Innova Crista. Crista is the all-new successor to the Innova after the previous one ruled the market for over a decade. In fact, it was under development for almost five years now and benefits from Toyota's new modular platform which gives it a better chassis, opens up new engine options and gives it a bigger cabin. It also subscribes to Toyota's new design philosophy which gives it a familiar look that is in line with the new Corolla or Camry. Be it the aggressive sculpted face or the large imposing grille or tiny aerodynamic fins which are set to aid fuel economy and high-speed stability, the Crista looks every bit a new generation Toyota. It also looks quite smart for an MPV thanks to its SUV-inspired styling cues like the broad shoulders, flared wheel arches and matching 17-inch alloys. Step inside and you will be in for a surprise. While the earlier Innova was showing its age and most equipment in it looked like an afterthought, the Crista's cabin justifies its long development time. From the flow of the dashboard to the integration of the equipment and the trim elements, everything seems well thought of. Even the choice of colours for the upholstery is thought of carefully. Black for the lower trims to avoid getting soiled easily because they are likely to be used in the cab segment, while a classy brown which looks better and needs more care is reserved for the family focused top spec trim. It also throws in plenty of new equipment, automatic temperature control for the first and second rows, a touchscreen infotainment system with video playback and satellite navigation, voice recognition for phone and audio functions, keyless entry and go, cruise control, ambient lighting, auto down for all four windows and an anti-pinch function. All the seats are also wider now and cushioned firmer for better long distance comfort. The driver's seat gets electrical adjustments while the second row seat gets seat trays and easy slide function to adjust the front seat from the back. Access to the third row is now easier too. The third rows of the Logi and Innova are strictly good enough only for two adults and a kid or maybe three kids, not three adults. It's not very comfortable but out of the two, I think the Innova still does a better job. And by both cars, I'm referring to the Logi. Despite its form, it isn't a bad looker. Customization kits like the Stepway give it a bit of design flair. But yes, it still looks like a typical people carrier. Even this one comes with 7 and 8 seater options. Its seats aren't as wide as the new Innovas, nor does the cabin wow you with its design. But long distance comfort isn't compromised and ingress and egress is easier on this one since it is lower. In terms of features, it doesn't come close to the Crista at all, but ticks all the basics you will need on a people carrier and then some. Reclining second row seats, flight trays, AC vents, touchscreen infotainment system, satellite navigation and even cruise control. After using the Logi for a really, really long period of time in the Ori garage, it's been an absolute favourite, but now suddenly it feels so much more utilitarian when you get get out get down from the Innova and get into this car. I just can't believe how old school this feels, but it's still the whole character of this car. It is built to a cost, it is more value for money, but we'll talk about that later. Coming to the engine, a 1.5 litre mill and what a potent operator it is. It comes in two states of tune, an 85 PS version better suited for city commutes and a 110 PS variant which works wonderfully well for highway runs. The torque on both these engines is more sedan territory but the respective 5 and 6 speed gearboxes are tuned to provide a good torque spread across the rev range. So as long as you are in the mid range, the Logi won't feel strained even with a full house. But there is turbo lag which makes for a relatively weak low end shove so you need to plan your gear shifts better. Despite a smaller displacement, it can happily cruise at 100 km an hour at 2500 rpm with a full house and still return a healthy fuel economy. The small displacement has other advantages too, like tax benefits and compliance with Delhi's 2 litre rule. The Logi is built on a monocoque chassis and that makes it a lot more easier to drive as compared to the Innova. The Innova, of course, gives you a more commanding view of the road with its ladder frame giving it a taller ride height. And that may work for some drivers, but for people who prefer a more car like seating, the Logi is certainly the car for you. The monocoque also gives it better driving dynamics. Its body roll is relatively low for an MPV and the suspension takes on potholes rather well. 
our long-termer had even outclassed some of the more expensive SUVs on a trip to the treacherous regions of Ladakh. After all, it is a duster underneath. But the Innova is a proven workhorse as well and its underpinnings come from the mightier Toyota Hilux. Its bump absorption is now unmatched by any MPV around it. Ladder frame chassis does get unsettled over sharp bumps and potholes and that can be a bit unnerving. But it recovers quickly and hardly sends any jolts to your backside. Handling is pretty decent too. The 17-inch tyres of the Krista will cost you about 10,000 rupees more for a set change compared to the Logi or the previous Innova's 15-inchers. But the grip from the larger tyres is quite good around corners and under braking. The brakes too feel more assuring and progressive than the Logi. The last time the Innova was pit against the Logi, we were not very impressed with the engine. The engine was showing its age. It was feeling very unrefined. It couldn't match up to the Logi's smaller engine in terms of the performance. The new one, or both the new engines, are set for much better figures. Unfortunately, we haven't put this car to a road test, so I do not have the figures to back it up. But they feel very eager, they feel a lot more powerful, and on paper as well, they are quite powerful engines. They also offer the choice of a more convenient automatic transmission which Toyota says is tuned for our conditions, both in terms of performance and endurance. Time will tell. The clutch is also lighter on the Krista than the Logi, so city commutes aren't a big problem. Both the engines in the Innova Krista take hardly 2200 rpm to cruise at about 100 km an hour. But the larger displacement and the Innova's heavier body mean that both return lower fuel economy than the Logi. The Innova being an all-new car, actually has a lot better safety equipment as compared to the Logi. Not just in terms of the safety features, but also the way the chassis has been designed, the kind of end cap rating that uh, it is gunning for, it's a lot better than what the Logi has to offer. The steering on both these MPVs is quite heavy, but the Innova's unit feels more direct. In terms of noise insulation too, the Innova does a better job now. The last time we pit the Logi against the Innova, the Renault MPV felt more premium. The new Innova though outclasses it in this regard by a huge margin. But it doesn't end here. Considering what the Innova has transformed itself into, it has moved up a segment where it has virtually no competition, both in terms of price and as what package it is. And while doing that, it doesn't really go ahead and trample the Renova Logi. Instead, it creates a void in the 10 to 15 lakh rupee bracket for the Logi to fill in. Now, whether Renault can make the most of that is something that remains to be seen. But in a nutshell, the Logi still remains the more value for money offering if you are strictly looking for a people carrier. But if you are into luxury and features, then it looks like the Innova ticks all the right boxes and finally justifies its price tag.